What's going on, everybody? It's time for another Arena League with me, Jerupidus. And today we're going to be playing something I've been calling Sactos. It is Rakdos Sacrifice. And uh, you probably already know this list pretty well, like the Cauldron Familiar, which is of an um, Mayhem Devil sort of list, is a pretty common thing. There's this one, there's like uh, Jun Sacrifice, you can put Collected Company in it, but this one is just straight Rakdos. And I've been doing really well with it. Right now we're at 14-4 and four with this deck for a 78% win rate, which is pretty good. Uh, a lot better than I usually do. So why don't we talk about the deck just a little bit. Um, one of the new additions is this guy, Scrap Heap Scrounger. Um, this gives you a lot of staying power in combination with Woe Strider and then your main deck Chandra's. It lets you uh, play kind of a grindy mid-game to keep the gas flowing against the more controlling strategies, particularly uh, Sultai and Blue-White. So I really like it because you will play against Sultai a lot on the ladder, and then obviously uh, the sacrifice strategies are amazing against creature decks. So this to me doesn't feel like it has too many weaknesses, and that's kind of been borne out with my win rate thus far. Um, so yeah, we've got... One copy of Call of the Death Dweller. Um, this is something that you, in an ideal scenario, will combo with your Mayhem Devil to give your Mayhem Devil Death Touch, and then you can just machine gun your opponent's entire board um, should they outsize you, especially against uh, things like Mono Green or Gruel when their creatures get particularly large. If you can put that together, uh, you can just shoot them all and win that way. And then I already mentioned Chandra, but I've been really liking the main deck Chandra. It pretty much does everything you want in this deck. It's a removal spell for a large creature. Or it's reach and card advantage, depending on the matchup. But it's pretty much always good. And people really can't afford to ignore this most of the time. So in aggressive matchups, it also takes a little bit of pressure off you for a turn. Which is really nice as well. Uh, the mana base is pretty standard, but there's going to be a lot more red in it to support the Chandra. That's why you've got... Uh, Kind of the crappier Canyon Slew, but uh, it does cycle, so it's not the end of the world to include it in the deck just to get your red source count up. Um, but other than that, I'm pretty excited to get to the games and show you what this deck is all about. And I just want to mention that credit for this particular list goes to someone by the name of Samsoni1. I found this list on his Twitter, and it's been really good for me, so I just wanted to give credit where credit is due. And with that out of the way, why don't we get to the games? Uh, this hand is going to be a big old no. Kahira usually means control, and I don't have anything to combo with my Witch's Ovens, and I have nothing to combo with Priest. So let's go ahead and throw this back. This looks a lot better to me. The question is, do I want to pitch a land? And with Chandra in hand, I think the answer is no. So it's going to have to be one of our three drops. And while Call uh, is our one of, there's nothing here that really makes me want to keep it. So I think we're just going to put back Call. Oh, you know what? This might be, uh... Might be, like, Neoform combo or something. Honestly, I have no idea. So let's lead on Fabled Passage. We could lead on Swamp to get our Witch's Oven down. But they have a main deck rest in peace, so that's interesting. <laughs> um, I'm going to go ahead and grab a red to get the second red for my Chandra. And I have no way of interacting with rest in peace, so we're just going to have to try to win through it. But this makes this Witch's Oven completely worthless. Okay, they put Kahira in hand. And I think we're just going to go ahead and be efficient and get our Wostra. Oops. Oh, dear. Well, I guess we're playing Scrap Heap. <laughs> I'll be sad if they have a Sweeper, but at least I get to slam Chandra. Be 
And honestly, um, it's not like playing Wolf Strider there would have been significantly better than playing... Ah, uh, I see what deck this is. But it's not like playing Wolf Strider would have been significantly better than playing Scrap Heap there. Neither of them really matter or are particularly different from one another. So it's not the end of the world. Today's my lucky day. Yep, why don't we go ahead and play that? And then I'm going to play my Woe Strider. And just keep pressuring them to have sweepers. Because I am drawing uh, two cards a turn with Chandra. But I think now I can't win. Is that right? I think it's... Well... Yeah, so... This means that this can't get counters on it. So let's just plus Chandra and see what happens. But I think I can't possibly win now. Oh, this is gonna hurt. Yeah, I can't deal them damage, and there's no way in my deck to win if I can't deal them damage, right? So I think we'll go ahead and concede. So they put that together pretty fast. Yeah, and I have no method of interacting with that. So I think we're going to bring in Thoughtseize. It doesn't look like I need to handle creatures at all, so the call uh, combo is fairly unnecessary. And I suppose we'll just try to uh, bring in Thoughtseize to rip one of those enchantments out of their hand. But I have to feel like them assembling this combo is fairly unlikely. Even if they're playing four of each, it can be hard to put together. I don't really think there's anything else particularly I want to do, so what should I side out? They have Rest in Peace, so it's probably true that I can just side out Scrappy. And I guess I'll bring in a Rankle. That could also help me shrink their hand and maybe eventually hit a combo piece. I mean, obviously they're just going to not discard their combo pieces, but who knows? I think it's better than doing nothing. <laughs> All right, let's get to it. Let's play first. This is fairly aggressive. I only need a sack outlet to make this all come together. So I think I'm going to keep it. It's not amazing by any means, but... It seems like they have a hard time interacting with an early butcher. Yep, that's fine. And I think what I'm going to do is just play a second Butcher, because I don't really want to expose either of these cards to a Sweeper next turn. And this will deal them five. Okay, that's pretty good. I think what I'll do is play Woe Strider, claim it, hit for three, and then we'll see if we need to scry. I like that. All right. Game three. Now, is there anything I would change on the draw? I don't think so. It seems like going underneath them is pretty important. So it's possible I actually want the scrap heaps, and I don't want, like, too many Midnight Reapers. They let me draw when they cast a Sweeper, but it seems much more important to, like, just aggro them out before they can assemble their enchantment combo. So why don't we just go to one Reaper and keep the Scrap Heaps and make sure that we uh, present a fast clock. 
I'm not 100% sure that's correct, but I've also never played against this deck before, so <laughs> we'll, we'll see. Let's go. This hand does have a Thought Seize, so I think I like it. Wow. <laughs> okay, okay, opponent. Um, I think I just lead on Canyon Slew then. That makes sense to me. They got a lot of prison cards. Okay, so I think that Priest is not going to be super important. I could be wrong about that. It's it's definitely tough to decide which of these two to play. If I go Priest into Mayhem Devil, um, that's pretty vulnerable to a Sweeper. So I think I'm just going to play Scrap Heap. Perfect. That's the guy I wanted to see. And then at the very least, we can play Mayhem Devil with a Fabled Passage. And that's what I'm going to do. And then we can clear that 3-1 out of the way. If they don't have a sweeper here. And that's all the prison cards you could possibly imagine. And I think I have the kill here. If I leave the Fabled Passage, I can get two pings. It's pretty close. It will put them to one, it looks like. So I'm going to hang on to the Fabled Passage, I think. I don't need to do it now. Oh my god, I think that's game. <laughs> oh, they gain a life, though. That's unfortunate. But we can pop this one. Ping. Oh, they have Hexproof, huh? All right. I forgot that. Yeah, do I just play Priest? It doesn't seem like... But they have Hexproof. So there's, like, no reason to play it. Yeah, all right. And I just hope they don't have a Sweeper, I guess. Yep, there's Kahira. Uh, I mean, I don't know. Are they dead on board? I have no idea what's about to happen. Okay. <laughs> cool. Want to know? All right, let's play first. So both of these lands come into play tapped, which is pretty ugly. Yeah, I think we're going to have to ship this. All right, this is a little bit better. I don't really want to go to five, and I think I can bottom one of these three drops. In the dark, it's hard to choose, um, but I think it's going to be Reaper, and I'll explain why. Um, 
so Priest is going to be a combo with Woe Strider. Like, if I go Priest into Woe Strider, I can immediately activate Priest, which I can't do with either of these cards. Mayhem Devil is one of our best cards in the deck. I can't really imagine ever bottoming this. Um, the other option is just doing the Witch's Oven. But should these fail, I do still need a Sack Outlet. I mean, it's pretty tempting, actually, to do the Oven. Huh. I think I just talked myself into that. Oh, man, this is tough. Yeah, all right, it's Oven. Okay, so it's Sultai. We're going to go get our red. This is not a matchup where uh, Priest is very good. We drew an oven anyway, so now I don't have to feel stupid about anything. Opponent thought seizes and probably takes Mayhem Devil. Takes the oven. Interesting. Well, we don't draw land, so that's probably game. If you've got to attack with your priest, um, you're probably going to lose. Yep. All right. Well, I'll cast the priest. And I can't attack here because of Shark Typhoon. Yep. I mean, I'll keep playing. Kind of tempting to attack now. I doubt they have a second Shark Typhoon, but I'm not going to. One Shark Typhoon is pretty standard for uh, Sultai. I think most people play the main deck that way. Never mind. <laughs> I'm a genius. A genius dying with five cards in hand and two lands. <laughs> I'm surprised there's no Nissa there. All right. That goes to the bottom. And I tell you what, I'm not playing around a third Shark Typhoon. We're getting in. Take your two. We'll make this game look closer than it was. All right. Nissa means, well... I don't know. I'm just going to keep playing for science. But I'm dead on, like, the next attack, right? Okay, well, there's a priest. <laughs> um, I'm going to go ahead and activate. I guess I could have blocked and done this, but it's seven right now, right? And yeah, I can't cast anything. Okay, I am actually dead. All right, GG. Okay, so we're about to see, I think, uh, what I was talking about, provided I draw more than two lands, where we're a little bit better at grinding. So we can trim on Priest and Claims, I think. Yeah. We'll just go down to two of each of those. I mean, it's fantastic against a uh, Uro, but they don't always have that. And so the sideboard plan I have here says minus one Woe, minus two Reapers, minus one Devil. I think that's a little crazy. I think we can get rid of the call. Um, And what do we want to bring in? We definitely want two Thoughtseize. And I think, yeah, we need three Noxious Grasps to kill Nyssa. Uh, Lantern, Chandra, and Citadel. 
And so we'd have to cut three cards. It's really hard for me to cut Reapers, but they don't play like actual mass removal. So I think we can go to two. And I'm, I'm not cutting a Devil. I think that's kind of ridiculous to do. So we'll just go to one of these and cut one Woe Strider. Yeah, it looks pretty good to me. Let's play first. So we do have the Oven Combo and a Noxious Grasp for uh, Nyssa. So I think we're going to keep this. And we're going to lead on Fabled Passage um, because I don't feel the need to play either of these turn one. It's not super important. It's much more important to be able to curve out. And we can always play both on turn two. And we're going to get our second red for our Chandra. Uh, tower is actually kind of a good draw. And so, a thing we're going to want to do is on my opponent's turn... I'm going to want to keep the cat dead. Because they have, um... Oh, what is the three mana minus two minus two exile? The point is, is that that card means that everything that entered the graveyard that turn uh, gets exiled. So if you sack your cat in response, your cat still gets exiled. So we're going to play the Mayhem Devil right now. I um, mean, we're going to do the cat. Uh, but we're going to sack the cat right away. There's a growth spiral. I don't mind that. Um, that happens. So the question is, do I want to bring my cat back right now? And I think the answer is yes, because I want to attack with it and then use Phyrexian Tower to get a Chandra down. So let's do that. Yep, deal him the damage, and this puts a tremendous amount of pressure on to do something right now. And if I draw a black land, I could potentially stick a citadel. I do not. Why don't we plus? Well, let's think about this. So I could I could plus and make two red, go Midnight Reaper and give it haste, put them to two. But I think plussing is probably just as good, and it doesn't spend a bunch of cards. Be easy. Yeah, and we'll just cast the Reaper. Elder Guards, eh? And a Scooze. Pretty tempting to just, uh, oh no, I don't have the black for Citadel, unless I sack something to Phyrexian Tower. But I think what we're going to do is uh, just win the game. <laughs> okay, game three. I think winning the game was a pretty solid play, so... <laughs> So against Sultai on the draw. I don't think there's anything I want to change. Call is um, mildly tempting just because they have so many one-for-ones. 
But Noxious Grasp was uh, huge. Yeah, looks good to me. Let's go to game three. I don't know how much I like this many answers. But on the draw, I'm willing to see if this hand develops. Like, Thoughtseize into Priest is, like, decent. It doesn't do very much, but having answers for an Elder Garg and a uh, Nissa is pretty good. So I just kind of have to rely on the top of my library. That is not a good draw. Do I want to turn one Thoughtseize? I guess so. So what do we got here? I don't really care about Tails End. Obviously, we're not picking Uro. Chemister's Insight seems like a bad deal, so why don't we just take Elder Gargs? I know that I have an answer for it, but it seems to be the card I should pick. I mean, I could take Explore, but that just feeds Uro, and it doesn't really get me anywhere. It does. They do only have two lands. But I often find trying to mana screw people is a fool's errand. And if they're gonna get mana screwed, they will still get mana screwed even through an explorer. So let's just take Elder Gargs. They drew the land. So it would have been a fool's errand a bit anyway. So why don't we play uh, the Priest? I could play Scrap Heap, but... Priest is so slow to get going that I think it's worth um, playing it first. Okay. So we can play both of these cards, and I think we're going to. And it's worth noting that I can actually do an instant speed Noxious Grasp off of sacking both of these from the two black that I get from Priest. Yeah, I guess that just happens. Wolf Strider's a good draw. And they are currently missing land drops, which is good for me, which means I think I want to try to pounce as much as I can. Citadel is a good draw. I should maybe have scribed there, but I would have kept Citadel on top, I think, anyway. But we will probably scry this turn. That's fine with me. You love to see that. Okay, so they probably want to pick odd. Yeah, even would just get scrappy. So why don't we go ahead and sack the cat? I do like another Woe Strider. Yep, let's hang on to that. Okay, they pick even. Interesting. I guess the uh, Scrounger is a little cheaper to get back, so maybe it's better. It's not really obvious to me. Frustratingly, their Uro is going to put them up to 9. Okay, Nissa's like, fine. I think I'm going to crack my Fabled Passage now so they can't Tails End the trigger. They will have four mana, but it will only be good for a Chemister's Insight. And if they Uro, I'll be able to kill both Nyssa and Uro and attack. And I think that means they can't Uro this turn now. Yep, 
You want to tails end that? I didn't think so. All right, land is pretty good because then we're a mana away from casting Bolas' Citadel. The problem with that is that they've got a tails end in hand. Now, I'm going to get to kill Nyssa this turn. So it's it's a question of do I want more action? But I got to feel like casting, like resolving Bolas' Citadel will be pretty good. And they'll be a little bit pinched on mana. So having to leave up that tails end the rest of the game seems tough. But it's, I mean, I could also draw another Thought Seize at some point. So yeah, all right, we'll keep it on top. All right, my turn. Draw the Dragon Skull Summit. Now the question is, do I want to um, grasp Nyssa now? I think so, because that will uh, cut them down on how much mana they have. Okay, that worked. Now they're down to two mana. And with five cards in Graveyard, I think I'm attacking both here. So here comes probably a row. Yep, that resolves. And they play it tapped, so now they can't cast Tail's End. Oh, boy. <laughs> I couldn't even get it out. Oh, baby. Here we go. Uh, can you get out of my way? There we go. So I can deal them this much. I think what I want to do... Like, I want to try to win this turn, I think. Yep, let's keep that on top, and I think that does it. All right, 2-0. All right, what do we have here? This hand looks really slow. I don't have anything to combo with Claim the Firstborn and Double Chandra. I think this is going to have to go away. All right, this has a Cat Oven combo. Looks good to me. I think we can bottom a Dragon Skull Summit. Plus, our Claim is actually a removal spell in this hand. Looks like it's our best friend Sultai again. Yep. So we'll jam an oven. Second oven is also a good draw. And in game one, we should be pretty safe from the card whose name I can't remember. <laughs> It'll come to me, I swear. Cry of the Carnarium, there it is. I knew it. Um, so, th all that being said, I think I'm still going to leave my cat dead on their turn. Um, because there's pretty much no reason not to, especially with double oven. All right. And, yeah, I'm not going to expose it. They could have an Eliminate, so. Priest is not a terrible draw. Not particularly exciting, though. Uh, 
Um, yeah. Extra food is good. Yeah, and we're still not going to expose our cat. Scrappy's a nice draw. And you might be thinking I could be attacking with my cat. Um, and while you're right, one of the reasons to leave the cat dead on their turn, aside from Cry the Carnarium, is that you might draw... Um, oh, dear. You might draw uh, your devil. Um, is there anything I want to do before this? I guess I'd like to uh, loop my cat. Yeah, that resolves. I was having so much fun with my ovens. Now they're all gone. Yeah, that happens. Um, And now I think I'm actually going to do this because the damage is the same. Like, if I were to draw a uh, Mayhem Devil, the damage would be the same where I would get the one damage. Um, but I think I need to try to get some damage on them. And Woe Strider will give me one more Cat Loop, which is nice. Alright, there's Nighthawk Scavenger. And I will probably just attack right into that. But I'm going to crack this Fabled Passage um, so that I can get my Scries in here. It doesn't make that much of a difference, but... I like that. Yeah, I think I'm going to put that on top and then I'm going to attack all and draw a card. That makes sense to me. And then I can also do my Cat Loop and draw a couple cards off that, so we'll wait on that and we'll just play Midnight Reaper. And I think I'll just send Scrappy, because if I lose Woe Strider, I guess I can do the Cauldron Familiar thing before it dies. Yeah, let's get in with both. They just take the, uh, the six. All right. Well, then I'm going to see if I can't draw a uh, claim. I kind of maybe should have done that first. In fact, I absolutely should have, but either way. Let's draw some cards. Yeah, that can go away. All right, Claim the Firstborn is on top. Man, I could have won this game this turn. But that's kind of the nice thing about this deck, is that even when I screw up, I still usually manage to win. <laughs> like this. And so here's the thing about that. I'm a bit of an idiot, and I can't really succeed with a deck like Sultai, where it, it felt to me like you absolutely must make zero mistakes. And I make lots of mistakes all the time. Sometimes I play the wrong land on turn one. And so a deck like this that, like, forgives you for that and can still find a way to win the game uh, is really right up my alley as a stupid, stupid idiot. All right, so how do we want to sideboard here? Probably same as last time. Minus two Priest, minus two Claim, minus two Reaper. And we can cut the Call. That way we can keep in the uh, all four of our Devils. And then we want two Thoughtseize, uh, Chandra, Citadel, Soul Guide, Lantern, and I think... All my uh, Noxious Grasp. So what did I miss? Maybe minus one Whoa, Yeah, that makes sense. I don't know if it makes total sense, but that's what I'm going to do. So let's go. 
Nope. <laughs> oh no, come on, come on. I mean, I could keep this. I do have oven familiar. In fact, I think I'm gonna, I'm not going to five. And all these cards cost one mana, so let's just bottom Chandra. That's an <laughs> unfortunate draw. So do I just jam familiar? I mean, it's either familiar or oven. I think we'll play the familiar. Oh, I was hoping we could maybe achievement unlock, like, beat an opponent with one land. Okay, so now I get to go Thoughtseize. Okay. I kind of don't mind that being gone for now. So this is one million removal spells and one Nighthawk Scavenger. I think I'm going to take the Scavenger because all of these look pretty silly in the face of an oven except for Pulse. So you could make a reasonable argument for Pulse, but I'm kind of willing to just let that happen. I guess it happens next turn, though, right? Yeah, let's take the Pulse. They could have Fatal pushed my cat in response there. That would have been kind of a silly thing to do, but they could have. And we're going to keep the cat dead on their turn to play around uh, Cry of the Carnarium, the card I uh, heroically remembered the name of. There he is. And I can't draw both a land and a uh, Mayhem Devil, so there's no real reason to bring the cat back right now, though. Do I want to play Soul Guide Lantern now? I guess at any time I can exile their graveyard. It doesn't seem that important, but also I'm super pinched on lands. And I don't know when another opportunity is going to come up to play it, so I think I'm just going to play it. it does get rid of Cling to Dust, which is kind of nice. I kind of forgot that was there, so. Um, let's go ahead and keep one of our cats dead. Okay. I do probably want to grab my second red. And they have double fatal push, so I'm not going to expose both of my cats while my oven is tapped at the same time. Now there's Chandra. She's not much use to me, but... I may want to use this to draw a card. They're on um one card in graveyard. So I'm not super worried about Earl right now, so I think we're gonna do that. All right, so I can go Mayhem Devil and get this Scavenger, or I could just try to stick Chandra and Minus and kill it. Both are vulnerable to Aethergust. Devil just kind of gets killed by, like, Fatal Push on their end step, whereas Chandra does not. So I think that's kind of a decider for me. I'm going to try to stick Chandra. Go ahead and kill that. Let's deal him a damage. And 
And I hope they don't have Shark Typhoon. They don't. They just have a million removal spells. So they're gonna probably Blood Chief's Thirst. I guess I bring back both cats here then. I can't think of a reason not to. That does make my Citadel pretty bad. Maybe they won't know that? <laughs> Take Citadel. You know you want to. Yes! <laughs> oh man, is that good. Okay. Let's go ahead and plus. Deal you some damages. Now they got a whole bunch of removal. But that's all they got. And I think I'm going to go Devil and Sack of Familiar for Scrap Heap. Is that good? I mean, like, look at their hand. They can just Fatal Push it. Maybe I just play Scrap Heap. But they have Graph Digger's Cage. But I think I'm gonna. I don't think playing Devil right now makes sense to do. And right now, with, like, Frexian Tower, I have a couple of damage with Mayhem Devil where I can... Yep, that happens. Where I can, like, sack a cat. To the uh, Frexian Tower, and then bring it back, deal a couple of damage that way. But I'm still not ready to play Mayhem Devil. Like, I, I don't think dealing a couple of damage with it matters. So I think I'm just going to keep trying to damage him with these cats and see where that gets me. If they draw an Uro, this whole thing falls apart, but... Yeah, that happens. We're done here. Now, am I crazy, or are they just Golgari? I could have sworn they had a uh, Triome. Yeah, I mean, they can't come back anyway. So I guess what I'll do is do the Frexian Tower thing. Oh, but I can't bring them back anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Like, I do not believe I have a Braid in. So that might be a consideration for next game. Alright, Castle Lothwain is not a bad draw. Like that. I knew you told this is gonna hurt. And we're getting close to the point where Mayhem Devil is gonna deal a few damage. As many as three, so. All right, well, there's an extra one, and I think I'm just going to cast that. So the question is, if I cast this, I have three mana. If I plus Chandra, then I would be able to sack both foods, but I think I'd rather just keep... Yep. You're going down. Yeah, at this point, if I don't do the tower, then I have two extra mana, but then my devil's gone, so yeah, it's fine. If I do leave up tower, I could still activate Castle Lothwain, though. I think that's probably worth doing. Yeah. Because they're going to go um, Crack Fabled Passage and then uh, Fatal Push.
So I think being able to sack it to tower, deal a damage, and then draw a card is pretty good. Not a bad draw either. Heal yourself a couple of damage. I love it. All right. So they have 11 cards, so they do get to cling to dust and gain three life, right? So they are at seven. But I think racing for this Chandra ultimate is going to be pretty good. Deal you two, and now these Dreadhorde Butchers, I think, are lethal. Well, they still have the 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 life. Okay. Well, they concede anyway. <laughs> Three and zero is not bad. All right, let's play first. We've been doing that a lot. I have no idea if Triple Butcher is going to be good in this matchup. There are matchups where it is horrible, but I don't think you ship this. Triple Butcher on the play can just win games by itself. And then I have Woe Striders to be able to control when I can use the trigger. All right, are they mono red? Is this going to be a stomp? It is. Deal you two. No, we have no choice. Okay, so they're gruel. Well, I really need to draw a land. And I do not. Okay. Well, I guess I play Butcher. So what could I do? I could swing with Butcher that would like put both triggers on Zerta, but I think I'll just play one and pass. But this is a matchup where Butcher is not at his best. If I had been able to curve out, I think I'd be in a lot better shape, which is usually true of like any game of Magic ever played. But the point is, is that if I were able to um, get a Wolf Strider down and be able to control... Okay, so this is an interesting attack. This is not an Ember Cleave because they don't have enough mana. So what does that mean? It means that I could put my 2-2 on BTE and my 1-1. One, one. I don't really know how good of shape I am in from there. Do I just take 5? So they're going to follow this up with Bone Crusher. Killing both of these seems okay. And then they just have a Bone Crusher. Yeah, that's probably what I want to do. Okay. So you are two, you go here. And you're one, you go here. I don't like that play, but I feel behind. I'm surprised they didn't just play Bone Crusher unless they have a one drop. That's a weird move, in my opinion. Boy, Scrap Heap is such a liability. Well, I'm not blocking that anyway, so I may as well play the two-mana card. Main phase collected company. And BTE makes it cost two. That's pretty good. Yeah, I mean, now I don't really regret making that block, but... We're basically one Ember Cleave away from being dead. We just don't have blocks anywhere. Well, that's not bad. We're going to send the Scrap Heap because we can't block with it. That works for me. Ooh. 
but I don't really expect to be able to drain them out with this Cauldron Familiar from 14 when they're attacking for, like, 9 this turn, and possibly 13. But I tell you what, if I draw a land and I get a Mayhem Devil, um, that starts doing some real work. Yep, so this has got to be Embercleave. I don't think you would attack with uh, Lanoir if it wasn't. Okay, I guess not. Hexproof from black, you say. Well, I don't care for that at all. And another brawler. Apparently that card's all you need to beat me. All right, my turn. That's not going to do it. We are just uh, straight up dead, huh? Yeah, this is 4 8 12, all trample. Okay, let's go to game two. So, against Gruul, we don't want Scrap Heap, um, and we don't want Reaper. We can also get rid of a Butcher and a Woe Strider, but our Call of the Death Dweller combo is going to be good. And I think we just bring in all our removals, so we definitely want uh, three Noxious Grasps. That should kill just about everything they play. I didn't even see a um, Robber of the Rich this time. I assume they've got it, but, you know, you can see why it would be good. And we'll bring in the Abrades and the Chandra. It's a little bit tempting to bring in Rankle. Yeah, in fact, let's do that instead of Chandra. On the play, he's a way you can, like, get ahead and stay ahead. I may bring in the third Chandra on the draw, should there be a game three. I mean, this is everything you want to see. Snap keep from me. It's always a question if you should lead on Oven or Familiar, but I don't, like... I would lead on Oven if I felt like they would have a removal spell on turn one, but that's super unlikely. One Collector of Pelts. So I think I'm just going to get rid of that. Should I? It'll be a probably a 2-2. Could be as much as a 3-3, though, if they go BTE Voltaic Brawler. But I can still kill it if they do that, so I think I'm not going to be hasty. Plus, I can just block it. Okay, yeah. It, ma it makes sense to not do this. If they have no plays here, they are screwed. Yeah, this is going to be a massacre. Okay. Okay. These have been a couple of really fun, interactive games. <laughs> There's the BTE. I feel like they're going to have a lot of these, or they wouldn't have kept a one-lander. All right, well, that's a shame to lose. Does kind of shut off my uh, claim, but at least I have an abrade. But if I can just slam Chandra this turn, I cannot. But I do get a Woe Strider, which switches my claim back on, which is nice. It's funny how I lose my oven, and now I'm actually like concerned about losing this game. <laughs> After saying it would be a massacre, I'm panicking a little. I think we're going to be just fine, though. All right, Clothus is an annoyance, but I think we can beat it. Yeah, I think I actually like Swamp, because then I can slam my Chandra.
Yeah, there's like no way they're not dead here. I'm a little surprised to see Clothis against me, but I guess it's good. Do I just let this happen? Or should I set Cauldron Familiar? I feel like I should scry. It deals a damage either way. I mean, I don't even need that. Yep. You're going down. Man, should I just cast this? I think it's more style points to cast this and claim. Let's do it. <laughs> All right, game three. So on the draw, I, I feel like removal is more important. Like, obviously, Rankle can be removal, but he also just gets their worst creature, whereas Chandra ostensibly gets their best creature. And I feel like that matters a little bit more on the draw. I don't know. I mean, making them discard and sacking something is a big swing, so it's definitely close, but I do feel like I'm just going to be behind. And I don't know that this card gets me back ahead unless a couple of other things are already going right. But also kind of the same thing for Chandra. Okay, we'll, we'll leave it like this. Nope. Come on, deck. Yeah, I mean, I got a grasp... And a Priest. And Priest can do a lot of work in this kind of creature matchup, so... I'm gonna keep it, but I don't have high hopes for this. And I might just get rid of Fabled Passage. I kind of want all my lands to come into play untapped. And I want to go 1-2 for sure. I guess it could just be Blood Crypt then, but that's kind of my second red. Yeah, we'll get rid of the Fabled Passage, I think. And some of you might be thinking like, oh, well, then you can't thin your deck. And while it's true, it it does do like a non-zero amount of work when it comes to uh, percentages. It's really not that big of a deal. Yeah, this is the start they want. Alright. I'm glad it wasn't another creature. I'm pretty fine with that. And then that also doesn't... That's one less card to kill my priest. Now, I do need the top of my deck to deliver, but... I'm pretty fine with them abrading the uh, oven there. So this just gives life, death touch, death touch and menace. Okay, but no blocks. Just thinking about if I were to um, block with it and then bring it back with call, if that would do anything, but it seems unlikely. All right, so there's Rankle. So I think that means we're going to want to actually... I was thinking I would leave up two mana to Cycle Canyon Slew and have Noxious Grasp up. But I think I want to cast Rankle and see if that helps me in any way. So I think we'll just play Canyon Slew Tapped. So now we have to be vigilant for an Ember Cleave. And so, Rankle's not going to do anything if I block with Priest here. So I think I'm going to go no blocks. The problem is, is they can just go to damage and be super happy with 9. But I guess if they do that, then I'll Noxious Grasp. Yep, there it is. Okay. Yeah, and unfortunately that pumps their Pelt Collector. 
And that means that Rankle is not going to get the job done because I pay two, and then they just equip Embercleave and kill me if I make them sack a creature. Yeah, that's pretty terrible for me. So what could I do instead? Because I can't go uh, Rankle attack. They just put it here and deal me 10. If I play Rankle and leave it back to block, they come in for 10. I'm at 7 then, having played Rankle. So I'd probably just have to put Rankle on it. But I think we're not technically dead, so... Yeah, and that was... That could have been a Chandra. And Chandra kill this would have actually been pretty good there. So I think my intuition about that was correct, and I'll adjust my sideboarding in the future to just make that the third Chandra on the draw. And it's not really clear what I can draw here to even get out of this. That thing will be attacking for 10. I will lose both my creatures blocking it because I'm at 7 now, so I can't just block with Rankle. If I draw removal... I'm still taking... I'm still... Yeah, I'm still taking 7. Okay. Well, good games. And Gruul is such an awesome deck. Like, I think that's going to be the next deck I play a league with. Because it just seems so good. Like, I, I beat this deck a fair amount, but I lose to it a lot. And I mean, I don't know. If they're just going to rope me here, I'm just going to concede. Because this is 5, 6, 7. All right, we are three in one, uh, headed into our final round, and we are going to Mulligan. Oh, dear. <laughs> I mean, I've got Cannon Slew to cycle, but we got to go to five. Okay, okay, I can work with this. So we'll keep five. Um, we don't need Cauldron Familiar because we have nothing to combo with it. I think this whole hand hinges on Chandra, so I think I'm also going to get rid of Call. And we'll keep it like that. Alright, it looks like it's going to be Sultai. We'll leave with this tapped. A red is not what I was expecting. This must be the mirror. It is not. Okay, what is happening? Well, there's our second red, which is good. And I'm just going to play uh, Priest. YOLO that right into two open mana. I assume they'll kill it. They do not. Okay. Oh, so this is probably the uh, Jeskai control deck, I have to assume. So I could just try to slam Chandra immediately. Because Priest will not be very good. If they've got like a spell pierce, this is a complete disaster. But I'm going to do it. I think sticking a Planeswalker against them fast is good. And also on a five card hand, this could help on Mulligan me if they're unable to kill it this turn. All right, that's not bad. Oh, this is gonna hurt. Yeah, I think I will play that. And none of these cards really care about a sweeper. Make a shark. Okay. I'm not looking forward to them flipping this search, but there isn't anything I can do about it other than try to race to a Chandra ultimate. All right, my turn. 
Castle is a nice draw. I think I'd rather have the two damage. Now, they can make a 3-3 shark, which I'm sure they're interested in doing. I'd really like to get Scrap Heap down this turn. Let's see. If they wanted to trade with Blow Strider, yeah, I wouldn't be able to bring it back this turn. All right. I'm still doing this, I think. And I think I can attack with everything, yeah. Give me a scry. Um, yep, that looks like it's going to be a good draw. It's possible I should have done that before plusing Chandra, but I think it's, like, not a big deal either way. And let's play Scrap Heap. Still not quite ready to flip that, and we're close to killing them, so... I don't know what they could possibly be playing, but I don't feel too bad about this spot. Okay, so deal three damage to each creature. That's fine. And I don't need to scry because I want my Witch's Oven. Now, the question is, do I... Oh, I can just exile Priest. Yep, we're definitely doing this. Activate Chandra. Yep. You're going down. Deal you that much damage. Um, I should have played Oven first, but now they can't abrade my Oven. So that resolves. And now... I think I just play Oven. Can I still activate Castle Lothwain? It is four, so yes I can. So let's do that. And there's not anything that I could draw that I would want to play right now, so. Now search flips. Which is always bad. Draw an extra card. That's a good draw. So is that. So do I want to add two red? I'm always looking out for that. If I bring back Scrap Heap, I can start doing stuff with Mayhem Devil. And then I would want some more land to play this second oven. That doesn't quite kill them. So I think I'll just keep plussing. And if they counter this, then I can just bring back Scrap Heap, but I'm feeling pretty good. Yeah, and it's not quite lethal. Like, I could bring back Scrap Heap, sack it. Uh, that's one. And two, three is Cauldron Familiar. And if I hadn't plus Chandra, they'd be at six, so that wouldn't be lethal either. Okay. All right. I'm pretty fine with that.
Chandra threatens to ultimate, so they have to do something about that, and Scrap Heap is lethal on his attack. Do they have Arclight Phoenix? Uh, okay. Destroy X target artifacts or creatures. For each permanent destroyed this way, its controller reveals cards from the top of their library until an artifact or creature card is revealed and exiles that card. Okay, so two of them. And they get two artifacts or creatures. What's going to happen here? Okay. Ah, uh, flying in haste? Okay, that's pretty good. That means I don't get to ultimate. So, this is an infinite combo, huh? So that means they get to do this 20 times? Maybe they'll forget I have the food token. Okay, they did not forget I had the food token, but we do get to look at their whole deck. So it's more or less like a um, combo deck, so pretty much all they're going to have are sweepers and digging. Tail's End is worth knowing about for sure, and so is Sensor. But we are dead. Very close. They got there by one turn. So I feel like against combo, I like Thoughtseize. And I like the Soul Guide Lantern to slow down their um, search for Azkanta. And I think I like Bolas' Citadel because they're probably not very good at dealing me very much damage. Um, Dreadhorde Butcher seems amazing. Scrap Heap Scrounger seems fine. Um, I feel like I don't need some amount of Priests. And once their combo gets going... Claim the Firstborn isn't going to help me anyway. And I like Call for um, bringing back stuff that's gotten swept. Although it is not incredible, I think it's probably better than Claim. And does my Noxious Grasp deal with any of this? It does not. Because if I could kill either of those, then I could break up the combo, but I don't seem to be able to do that. But I do, I do definitely like the Citadel. I should have a reasonably high life total. Like, I, I lost this game at 20 life, so Citadel should be good. And I think that's about it. Rankle might be good as well, honestly. Maybe we can do that over call. Because just getting back, like, a Mayhem Devil doesn't seem that important. Getting back Dreadhorde Butcher is good, but I already have Scrap Heap Scrounger for that, like, kind of effect. So, I think we'll go like that. Um, this hand needs a little to get going, but I think one, two, three is too good to pass up. And let's lead on the oven. All right, so they could have Sensor. So I feel like I want to attack first. And then play Wolf Strider, because it's a lot less devastating to get this censored. Since it comes back later. No Sweltering Suns that turn, but I don't want to overextend. Now, I could play Mayhem Devil here. That would give me a few extra damage, but I'd rather just leave up the Scrap Heap ability, I think. And then next turn, we can leave that up while still playing a 3-drop. Yep.
All right, so exile stuff. So what we can do is go sack scrap heap. I don't think I want a six land. Then we can sack the goat. I don't hate the second oven, but I don't have anything to combo with it. Yeah, I think it goes on the bottom. We'll sack the Woe Strider. That resolves. And put Scrap Heap back in play. Okay, that's actually pretty good. So let's see. I don't have quite enough, right? One, two, three, four. Four more? It's not quite enough. All right, so they do... They can make a 3-3 three, three shark. But I think I can kill that. So if I play this... Yeah, let's, let's cast it and see what they do. Yeah, I think I'm just going to go for the win here. And we'll see what opponent wants to do about it. Just one shark, that's not going to be good enough. Okay. So I can go... Let's see. They're going to block three. They're going to take four. I could just kill the shark. Yeah, that should do it, right? Okay. Good enough. Yeah, I'm not sure if Soul Guide Lantern should be in... They don't do a ton of graveyard stuff. Like, all they are looking for is their combo. I do hate Search for Escanta, though. That just, like, guarantees they get it in, like, a couple of turns. Like, the only thing I could see replacing it with is an extra Chandra, but Chandra doesn't actually seem that good. Because they don't have any creatures to kill, really. And they can always flash in a shark and keep it off of ultimate. They did a pretty good job of that game one. Yeah, I think just keeping the pressure on with Rankle and then having kind of a combo finish with Citadel is where we want to be. Come on, deck. How about a good hand? Just Woe Strider and Witch's Oven is not going to cut it. I think I got to ship this. This is a little bit better. I'll keep this. I do like having Castle Lothwain, but it is pretty slow. I like having the Fabled Passage with the Mayhem Devil just to get a damage in at some point. So I think we can just ditch Dragon Skull. Maybe just Swamp. Yeah, that makes sense to me, because then I can lead on Blood Crypt, go Dragon Skull, Summit Castle, and then Fabled Passage. Chandra is a good draw, but I don't know how excited I am about it. There's the search. All right, Butcher is uh, superior to Scrap Heap, I think. Yeah, let's just get that rolling. Ooh, that's a good one. Perfect. Now we can go Castle Lothwain. Uh, Soul Guide. Let's play Scrap Heap first. Because if they want to censor something, I'm pretty okay with them censoring Soul Guide.
All right, that happens. And so it's tempting to play Chandra here, but I think I need a repeatable attacker. Okay, there goes the Pirate's Pillage. Now they're up to five cards, and they've got their uh, treasure tokens, which is not good. All right, so I think I'm going to exile their graveyard. Because they could flip that search pretty quickly. And I guess I'll pop the Fabled Passage now. Alright, I'm going to pay the two life. Now I could do this plus and play a Butcher, and I think that's what I'm going to do. Because they could kill me, I think, next turn. So I think I have to just try to get as much damage as I can and hope that I don't just lose to an infinite combo. That's it. Wow. This deck is pretty sweet. Like, if I can't stop you from resolving indomitable creativity, is that called? Um, that's just a turn five infinite combo kill. So, good games, Nico Stuzi. Your deck's pretty cool. Maybe I'll try that one out, too. Okay, so that league was not the best. We only went 3-2, and two, but it's still a winning record. And I thought the deck showcased uh, what it can do really well. Um, we lost to Gruul um, due to them having Embercleave, which uh, if you play Historic at all, I'm sure you're uh, pretty familiar with losing to that. Or winning with it if you play the deck. It's a very, very good card. Probably one of the best cards in Historic. And then we lost to a really interesting Is It uh, Infinite Combo deck. Um, which I'm not really sure this deck has very many answers for. It seems pretty tough for a deck like that to win if anyone's playing any counter spells at all, then your deck doesn't really do very much. Um, but it was definitely very good against us. I don't think I would change anything to worry about that deck. Um, we just didn't draw Thoughtseize and we just didn't kill them fast enough. And they comboed us on turn five, so... The way that uh, the Sacrifice iterations right now are built, they're not really built to kill your opponent by turn 5. You just kind of set up your little um, combos, your uh, Oven and Familiar and Mayhem Devil and ping everything down, but that's not really uh, that fast. So uh, I thought it was a pretty good showing. I had a lot of fun playing, and I hope you had fun watching. So uh, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next league. Mm -hmm.